Hello, my beautiful friends. How are ya? <laughs> thank you so very much for returning to my channel. If this is your first time, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate your time and your presence. Please kindly push the red subscribe button and the black notification bell. Don't forget to hit the like button. Let's share, share and spread the awareness <laughs> that being said this is my story time my people i know i am not a good storyteller i know that already <laughs> but i love to tell stories anyway but this particular story is very sad to me i mean very very heartbreaking i am completely devastated i had a story of a Nigerian woman who died in France while on transit to Nigeria a few days before Christmas. I don't know her personally. I don't know the full context of her death. I don't know what she died of, but it's just so very sad that someone was traveling to their country to see their families and died on transit while she was being laid over. I heard that she got sick and she was rushed to the hospital and she got a surgery. I'm not sure whether she died during the surgery or after the surgery. I don't have that details. I also understand that she just completed her home and she was heading home um, to do a housewarming and as well have her mother pray in her new home. This is very sad. She had an aged mother. Now, the poor woman is going to receive her daughter's body whatever happened to the housewarming the celebration of her daughter's accomplishment is now going to be mourning and funeral this is the saddest part of this story how is that old woman going to cope i mean the death of a child is the greatest nightmare and let alone in that age this is so sad. I have not been myself. I am totally and completely disturbed. But what I know, this is my observation about our Nigerian community in America. This has nothing to do with the woman that just passed away. Just like I said, I don't know her. Personally, I don't know her story. Whenever we have a project in Nigeria, a project that we are bullied into because Nigerian nation have a way of putting so much pressure on people, not just those ones in diaspora, including those at home. You know, they expect you to measure up to certain standard. They there's a, an expectation they have for everybody and not a lot of people can resist it. And people often caught up with this competition because all Nigerians do is to outdo each other in building like gigantic homes that they don't all need is all about show off that's what they do and then they will ridicule those of us in diaspora is that we have nothing to show for and it can be hard for some of the diasporans to ignore this bullying and so they tend to keep up to their expectations how do they do it they do multiple jobs, work multiple shifts. They don't mind working three, four shifts 
back to back, even if it means then sleeping at workplace for three days. They don't mind working hard to be able to get the money to be funding their project in Nigeria. The funny part of it is that most of the time they, they're not even in these homes. They live in America. Some of them travel once a year, some every other year, some three or five years. Okay? And you begin to ask yourself, is this kind of home worth anybody walking themselves to death? Because this happens all the time. I remember, like about 15 years ago, in Jamaica, Queens, I think in Jamaica Hospital, when a Nigerian nurse collapsed and died of brain aneurysm right in the hospital. And according to people who knew her and her co-workers, she's been walking back to back, back to back to the point that her supervisors and her co-workers were concerned about her health and about her well-being. I cannot count how many nurses that got caught into automobile accident and die because they were sleeping while they were driving home. They were tired. I cannot recall how many stories of nurses who just got into their car to take a little rest before they drive home and they died on the steering. This is the way our Nigerian communities overwork themselves to death. And this is not our, our personal need. Some of them have to take care of their whole entire families in, in, in Nigeria or Africa. And how can just one person take care of everyone financially? While you are paying for all of their needs and then catering for them, they also expect you to build a huge duplex. How are you going to make that money when they're not going to give you a chance to live your life? You're going to be paying for everything. They're going to be calling you off the roof and at the same time expecting you to be building projects. And if you don't do that, they will bully you, ridicule you, call you failure, call you all kinds of names. And some of us in diaspora are afraid of this bullying and so they try to keep up. And I will also share a story of a woman that I know personally. This happened like about seven, eight years ago. She was my co-worker in the bank when I was working in the bank in the 90s. She lived in Boston, Massachusetts here. And she was traveling to Nigeria because her son, her first son was wedding. And she wanted to buy stuff for his wedding. So she called me up and asked me if I'm going to help her shop in New York City because she didn't know New York. And I said, yes, why not? So I met her in New York City Port Authority in 42nd Street. That is the bus terminal. So she came in with Greyhound from Boston and uh, we hit New York City. I took her to Broadway and to, you know, Canal Street. And I took her to places. She traveled to Nigeria. Two weeks after that, she arrived in Nigeria. But while she was on the baggage claim, waiting for her luggage, she slumped. And died instantly there. So by the time they took her to the, to the hospital, she was declared dead you can imagine her son she came back for her son's wedding 
and ended up in a morgue. You can imagine how that young man felt. This is very sad. We need to slow down. In diaspora, we need to resist this urge to keep up with the expectation of our African people. We need to set up our priority, set it up straight, to understand that we have our immediate dependence, which is our children. And the moment we become parents, we are no longer living for ourselves. We live for our children. Because if anything happens to you, they are the greatest losers. Those people you've been giving money and sending money and working your life for in Africa won't even ask them how they are doing. Your children will become motherless or fatherless. We humans have a limitation. It's not sustainable for you to work, to provide for your family in this completely stressful waste and at the same time taking care of everyone in Africa and at the same time being expected to build this home because your classmate or your cousin or your brother has built their own. We have a different circumstances. All this gigantic stress leads to untimely death. When we do all that, we don't even go for physical check or medical checkup. No blood work. We continue to go on and on and on until we drop dead at work or while returning home. Every parent has a responsibility to do everything within their power to stay alive for their children. Because it's a disservice when you brought children out to this world and they haven't reached the age of emancipation. They are not independent. I mean, we don't control that, but there are certain things that we can do to, to stay healthy. Periodic medical check and annual examinations. We can do our own part and God can do the rest at the end of the day. She worked so hard. She built that home. I'm not even alive to enjoy what she worked for. This should be a lesson for all of us African diaspora. Slow down. Walk reasonably. Because even Jeff Bezo and Mark Zuckerberg and then um, Bill Gates and Elon Musk, I don't think they walked three shift or four shift at a time to become who they are. I don't think so. We might find a better way to try to make this money, but tearing our body, working for shift, and end up dying and losing everything. It just doesn't make sense, my people. I just want to share this. This could happen to anyone, and we should learn from the story of others. We shouldn't be sitting around for it to happen to us before we learn. Thank you very much, my wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you all. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the black notification bell. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and share, share, share. Let's spread the awareness, okay? Stay healthy. Stay strong. I love you all. See you in the next episode. I'm out.
peace.